contacted by the Indiana Department of Transportation. They're working on actually several bridge resurfacings here in Greensburg and in Decatur County. And they had asked to use one of our streets, Wilder Street, as a detour route for the bridge that they're resurfacing located at Five Point Tires over Gas Creek carrying Michigan Avenue or State Road or U.S. Route 421. We had um, worked out an agreement with them where they take care of any damage that occurs to the road for the use of it. This will be a fast moving project, take right now scheduled uh, a week, seven calendar day closure period. Um, and I should point out that that's um, a reasonable estimate of time provided that it doesn't rain for seven straight days or they don't encounter repair work necessary beyond what they programmed. So if those kinds of events occur, the seven-day period could be extended slightly. Um, late last week, Friday, I received a call from MnDOT. They were um, preparing for a closure they have scheduled for next Tuesday, a week from today. And they realized that we have a truck restriction, a truck prohibition on Wilder Street from Michigan Road north to Main Street and the reverse of Main Street to Michigan Road. And they're um, justifiably concerned that using that for a state highway detour route with the truck restriction will not work appropriately in that light. So I'm here this evening to ask your consideration of, I might back up a bit, the uh, truck, no truck signs are uh, supported by our city ordinance. Um, I'm asking your consideration of suspending the no truck route for the duration of NDOT's road closure while they want to use that street as a detour route. I'm assuming those signs were put up to discourage truck traffic through um, a residential area? Yes, it's um, the uh, signage is no through trucks. Um, I do not believe under state statute that you can pro totally prohibit trucks from using any street because there's often a need for local deliveries and that sort of thing. But this was to discourage through trucks. The request from MnDOT that I present to you is to allow trucks to use it for the duration of their detour. Yeah. The very reason that, that we discourage through trucks is the very reason that we was actually or that they negotiated that if there's any damage, they're going to cover the cost of that because of the because of the um, And I think that's besides the residential piece, it's there's residences where say highways go, but people might they know a shortcut, use it in trucks, and that will cause great damage, and we don't have any way to. That so, um, I see it's a, you know, it seems like the reasonable thing to do, and uh, they're trying to make sure they cover their bases. So, I don't see a reason why we wouldn't uh, have a motion to suspend <coughs> the ordinance 
pertaining to uh, Wilder Street there for the very drugs. Second motion. Motion made by Lance, second by Darrell. Is there any further discussion? Uh, one thing I wanted to add that is being filmed uh, for school members and future students during this time. Yeah. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those same sign. Those no passes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bridges are robbed up with on uh, Central Dispatch. Okay. I guess you're it. Yep. Uh, we've been working as a work group product. Uh, we brought their forth an idea to pursue looking at consolidating two dispatch centers between the city dispatch center and the county dispatch center. A, uh, basically equivalent of a white paper of that work group and presented that to the council. I know that uh, Councilman Tebby and Councilman Kane were both there for all of our meetings in support of this, so I think that from a, the city's perspective and how they worked through this, we uh, best suited to let them present how they worked through this in the work group and then we can answer any follow-up questions. Jamie, I'll defer to you to take lead here. Sorry, I'm Sharon McGlynn, or Sharon McGlynn, I'm sorry. I missed what you said, I'm sorry, I apologize. Just want you to walk through what, with the presentation here, what we hope to accomplish and what. Okay. <coughs> I don't know if I have actually printed off the, current, the uh, most current version of it, but basically I have uh, the, the one we were working on. You know, we just, I think everybody's seen it in their email, there were several benefits. So it wasn't just a benefit for, um, Originally, we looked at it when we were talking about cost benefits. We're doing a central dispatch, but there were a lot of other benefits that a central dispatch provided um, for streamlining calls and making sure the calls got routed properly, uh, landline calls, uh, or even the internet-based calls got routed appropriately and were coming through a lot of the factories like Keycom and Valio. Their internet-based calls actually go through the, cap the county first and they get rerouted to the city. So there were a lot of you know, time that gets wasted there. Uh, the cell phone calls are all getting routed through the county before they come to the city. So one timeliness, you know, just for effectiveness and streamlining. So a lot of positives uh, that came out of that. Um, I think, I'm trying to think, uh, I'm sorry, I thought you were going to kind of go through everything and I wasn't prepared for that. So um, if you look at the, the cost, what we did try to do from a cost because there were um, some differences in pay between what the county offered for pay for their employees versus what the city offers in pay for their employees. We actually bumped up the base rate salary uh, pretty significantly, I think, if you compare the base salary increase. However, there is a loss of longevity. We tried to compensate that through uh, certification pays. So every five years of service plus training and promotional or uh, performance reviews, would qualify somebody for a, uh, comp or a promotion. promotion type pay. It's, you know, so it's a certification type pay. Um, and then that would be, I think it was $1,000 every five years up to $4,000 max, um, which I think we said was kind of in line with what they were doing with the deputies, things like that as well. So that's kind of where we went with that um, as far as the pay went. As far as the vacations, things like that were really comparable. Uh, one of the things that will will be different if you look at pay from a city employee to a county employee is the, the insurance. Uh, they, they'll pay a, a, a little bit more of a portion for their insurance versus what they're paying from the city. So, I'm trying to think, in, in the, the, uh, I'm trying to figure out which sheet here I want to talk about. The, Sorry, going. Okay. Uh, I'm looking at the wrong box here. Jamie, Basically, think, there's a currently. Go ahead. I think the first thing that's most important. What's best for the community? What there, works the best? There were several benefits, and it wasn't it wasn't monetarily at all. Right. I mean, the reason we we spent several hours going through this as a work group, and and basically, you know, we pretty much the first night we just basically said we're going to put cost aside and. Is this even the right thing to do before we start looking at numbers, before we look at costs? 
and drilling down what the benefits are to the community, drilling down what the benefits are, um, and that's what I think the first two pages of the email that you got sent out were just benefits uh, for the community, you know, streamlining those things. There's also the issue of cost avoidance, not just cost savings, but cost avoidance. If we don't do this, we're going to have to upgrade our terminals. We're going to have to upgrade uh, a lot of the, the radios, the, the software. There's a potential, I think it was, uh, I don't know, Chief, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, it was about an $80,000 to $100,000 cost, I believe, is what we were anticipating on a cost upgrade <coughs> to just upgrade our equipment to get in line with what we need. And according to those numbers, by joining one central dispatch, Basically, for this next year, we're saving uh, just under fifteen thousand dollars. And if we didn't do that, if we went on our own. We're looking at least a hundred thousand dollars to upgrade. To upgrade, that, that's true. Um, and then there may be some other costs in there as well. So you, you do have that cost. Um, there's another cost that we kind of escaped me now that put in there. We're, we'll save about fourteen thousand dollars a year uh, for what we're paying currently for the next two years and then what the recommendation was from the committee was after the or towards the end of the second year for the 911 board uh, to come back together and make a recommendation to the city and the county on how we pay for what we're paying for moving forward. The other big portion of that is our current 911 board has got seven members. It's four from the county, three from the city. Uh, so part of this project will actually be to expand the 911 board to ten members, five from the city, five from the county. And then they can also have a basically a steering committee to look at policies and reviews and bring about four people together to have that steering committee. Right now, if they brought four people together, they have a quorum of their members, so they can't have that steering committee. Part of this would also be to have a director over the 911 system, um, and that person would basically be like a, a county department head level person. They're going to operate the schedule, they'll take care of the center. So these dispatchers won't report to the sheriff, they won't report to uh, the police chief, they'll actually report to a central dispatch um, the director. Questions, comments? I, I, I'll just echo a couple of things Jamie said, just to reiterate. Uh, <coughs> We did look at what the need is uh, very carefully, uh, looked at what the circumstances were to make sure that indeed this was not um, just a whim and it wasn't just or only uh, in terms of a few dollars, relatively speaking, um, you know, in terms of a couple million dollar budget, $14,000 doesn't seem like a huge sum of money. <coughs> So if it was only dollars and cents, why go through all the, the angst if, if it really didn't provide some real benefits? But it does provide real benefits to so the community in terms of safety, in terms of emergency response, in terms of coordination of emergency responses uh, on, on all the, the uh, systems within, within the uh, county. That's not only sheriff and, and uh, police, but also fire, emergency, EMS and other services, so <clears throat> state police, etc. It really makes a lot of sense. Um, and the other thing that we, we did take a look at was to try and make sure that we have some longevity to this. Um, and that was balancing, as Jamie said, balancing out uh, the 911 board, taking a look at trying to see how that's going to, to work. Um, I know that there could be, um, you know, if you got 10 members, you could get into a deadlock. Well, if that's the case, then Something's going to have to be worked out. We're going to work things out. Uh, and it provides for uh, oversight by not only members of the, uh, that are appointed, but the officials that are there as a, as a result of, of my office, but also uh, in terms of the city council and county council have representation, and also um, involving commissioners because they're going to be more involved with as the employees of it, um, creating a, an opportunity to uh, have an appointment from uh, the mayor's office, but also or the commissioner's office if, if uh, they don't want to do it themselves, as well as a second council member or a second council appointment. So 
So I think we're going to have a lot more, a lot invested in it in terms of trying to bring the community together. Um, and, and the other thing was that rather than leaving it as only a, uh, <clears throat> however it's split up now, and I, I didn't really look, work out the percentages of city and county in terms of their, each of their investment, but it basically holds investment roughly the way it has been. Uh, reducing a little bit for <coughs> in terms of the city. We're about seven twelve. So if you want to put yeah, it in a fraction, in, in we're paying for seven. They're paying for okay. five. So, uh, so it's roughly 50 50 But we're paying a little bit more. But over time, we hope to look at that and say, okay, well, what is the proper balance? What is the proportion balance? Right now, to get started, we think that's this will work. Everybody kind of stays whole. <laughs> Nobody seems to be harmed. And. Um, and then let's see where what the appropriate balance would be in a couple of years, and that will be written into the into the agreement. And I, and I think that's probably a prudent thing to do, ongoing every couple of years to review what's what's the appropriate uh, in terms of the cost and, and how the benefits are working. So. If we are seeing that by paying seven twelves, we're still saving fourteen thousand dollars. The county is only saving. Less than 200. Right now, it's 178 dollars. So, but the the other significant thing is, in terms of the county, <clears throat> they're saving uh, prospectively well, much more than that, <laughs> because um, the need for they're going to, in addition to the equipment costs that both of us would probably have, they may not have as huge a step as we are with, with the equipment changes that would be necessary. But they're going to have some necessary um, employee uh, expansion. And they're, the number of dispatchers they have, the number of people that they need to be responsible for is, has, has grown exponentially in the dispatchers' habits. So um, by combining, we take care of that need. Uh, and if they didn't combine, they might have some, uh, significant employee costs to to be looked at anyway. Whether they did it or not, I guess that's their decision. But I know that was going to be the um, the recommendation, at least from from 911 people, to take a look. At. We, we need some further support. The Just biggest cost out. savings that comes in, I think, in both uh, county and city is is the part time one, and then secondly, the in order to provide for this, uh, the capital costs of it. Are being covered by the Redevelopment Commission, so it's it's uh, technically a county a county uh, uh, redevelopment commission, but it really is a city um, inside the city, so to speak. Long story why that happened that way, but that's part of history. Um, and but they're using that as a way to benefit both, benefit all of us, benefit citizens of Decatur County. So um, that, that huge cost there in terms of both um, re remodeling to make it appropriate, uh, proper kind of uh, space and space needs, as well as equipment needs, um, that is being covered uh, by, um, and so there's at no cost to city and or the county for that purpose. So it's, it seems like a win-win, uh, notwithstanding there are adjustments that's going to be made, as uh, <coughs> Jimmy pointed out, in terms of uh, salaries, in terms of insurance. We've tried to minimize those um, as much as possible, <coughs> and we think we, you know, I know, I know there's, I know that it's not perfect, but I think we have done a good job of trying to minimize that and try to come up with this as close as we can do. Uh, yeah, uh, when you try to merge two different systems. Uh, with different beginnings, <laughs> different circumstances, and trying to bring those together. So, um, just one point with what you were saying, Glenn, too, just kind of to make sure you absorb the impact. Right now, I think we spend more than thirty thousand dollars a year on part time. Is that what? Is it six? Okay, the 911 board's covered about thirty thousand. We I'm cover sure. thirty-two thousand out of the 911 fund, and then there's an additional expenditure by the city right. uh, for part time for almost sixty thousand dollars. But if, so if we don't move forward with this, and then there's other changes in, in both structures, there's probably a lot of that cost that we'll end up absorbing 
moving forward as well. Um, so there's, there's, there's not just direct costs, there's some other hidden costs in here that are going to hit the city if we don't move forward. So in the few years when we get some history and we're able to review this and we have truthful, factual numbers, then we go back and renegotiate. Yeah, the numbers pretty well uh, match what we've got right now. I mean, the, the, the actual numbers, 911 calls and so forth, are, are not far off from where we're at. So it's not like either is, it's not like there's an imbalance. The costs and the numbers pretty well reflect one another, but it was just—it uh, seemed like the, the prudent thing to do from both entities' perspective is to um, look at that every uh, periodically and say, okay, what is the right act? What are the numbers saying? And it could be a time that you know, because of the density of population, Greenbrooks. <clears throat> going to increase some, or because of growth in the county, <laughs> it could it could balance out. Who knows? I mean, that's the future. So, but uh, rather than locking in one way or the other, and then somebody at some point in time saying, "Well, this is really unfair," let's take a look at it in a, a, a mutually respectful way, and every periodically just look and see where where things are. And frankly, I have a feeling that it's probably going to stay pretty close to where it is. <laughs> Just the way it may shake out. So this agreement is it to be reviewed every two years or just two years from now? I think what we originally proposed, what we were proposing was two years from now, the 911 work come back and look at it after they've got some data. And I think at that point in time, they can make a recommendation, maybe moving forward, this is how we go, or maybe for a five-year period. Or I think it's going to be based on the night work. We're going to let the 911 work review the data and come back and make a proposal. Based on the facts. Right. So I appreciate uh, Councilman Tebby and Kane both spending time and effort to, to work with this. Uh, so are you in agreement that this is the way to move towards the central dispatch? I, I am. I think that's the way to go. I am too. And I, I know there are going to there are there's other voices out there we probably should listen to. Yes. But, uh, and there might be questions. I think maybe it's appropriate to get our fellow council members questions answered first, or not first, but answered at least initially, and then they may have further after they hear the voices. Yeah. Terry? I just need some more input. I feel like it's right here right now, but I won't play it. I'd like to echo what you said, Mayor. I, I appreciate uh, Councilman Tebby and Councilman Kane, their efforts and the uh, I know they've put a lot of time in this, as many others on this committee or this board. Um, and uh, central dispatch, from a practicality uh, point, makes sense. I mean, it's it's almost like having a Walmart where we have a Walmart, another Walmart on the, on Lincoln Street, uh, having two of the same thing within a half mile of each other. And I can understand. Um, I, I can understand the thinking of putting these two together. However, that being said, I I have a personal feeling that there is a flaw here, and I feel like it could and should be worked out, and that is the compensation for our people mm -hmm. in the city. We will get to that. Uh, okay, but, but just hear what I have to say. This is just this is just Daryl thinking, which could be dangerous. Uh, I mean, it's always been my experience that if you bring two together, especially in these numbers, we're not looking at bringing 500 and 500 putting together, we're a couple, you know, handfuls of people putting them together. It's always been my experience that you take the greater and you bring the lesser up to the greater. And, uh, and when I sat down here tonight, there's a letter here from one of the dispatchers um, that I read, uh, Erica Free, and I appreciate your candidness, Erica, if, if you're here. Um, but she puts a table on the uh, on the back of, of her letter with three, six, seven of the dispatchers who are going to take the cut in pay. Um, 
And if, if, if it was in tens that's, of thousands, that's not accurate. Okay. I think I think when we figured that up, Chief, four of them were actually going to get raising day, weren't they, Chief? Is that accurate yeah. when we figured that up? Well, it just depends on, one, like we've talked, who's going over it, and two, what is agreed upon. Like I said, I know that some are going to, like I said, let's, people are going to take cuts in the bank reason through insurance. That's that's the main that's, thing. Yeah, there you go. Might as well throw that out there. It's the insurance where the biggest problem is. And I see that. The, yeah, the base pay was raised and there was some promotional. Will that promotional help some people? Maybe, but it's also gonna possibly hurt one or two because there's gonna be one that is gonna be above that number and she will take a cut. But like I said, the big numbers from our, where they have a voice to me is the insurance. And I mean, that's just, like I said, we're only paying a dollar a year. Yeah, I mean that it's a benefit. I understand that. A huge benefit. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And for comparison, the county, the county employee pays one one dollar a year. No, I don't believe that. I think that's all changed. They recently changed that for the past few months, and I don't know those details. Uh, and that because when I tried figuring out, somebody had told me that they thought that some of that might be changing again. So, like I said, I don't know what the county benefits are. County only pays ten dollars a month uh, just for the county employee. The county plus one, um, I believe, was either fifty or ninety dollars a month, and the family plan was a hundred dollars a month. It always says it's not even more than that. Even the family plan. The family plan, if you're on the, the high tier plan, is uh, one hundred and twelve. $112 a pay, so it's $225 a month uh, for the family plan. Uh, I believe this the uh, number for the individual only is right about accurate and right about $90 for it. Uh, spouse plus one or employee plus one for that cost. I've got copies from the county uh, stating difference on that figure. But Plus, they're doing away with their HMO PPO, and they're going to the high deductible insurance plan, um, which is it's out of pocket expense too. But the figures are accurate that she presented, and she would like to speak and discuss that to help explain it a little bit more. If you guys are okay with that, now, I'd like to finish my point. Okay. If we, I, I think, if we were talking hundreds of thousands or even tens of thousands of dollars here. You know that it might be different, but you know we're, we're we're talking about people here who are probably living from paycheck to paycheck, like most of us do, and and we're taking we're taking money out of their pockets and uh, away from their family, and that bothers me. And I understand I understand business is business, but um, um, that's the part that I see flaw. Uh, I, I I feel I I just feel that. It needs to be a little better than what it is. I know that we looked at that quite a bit. We were looking at this and going through it. That's actually one of the reasons we looked at the the cert pay versus the longevity to try to put something in there to compensate to equal it out. Um, you know, we, we tried to do everything we could to try to make that as minimal of an impact as we could. And, and Jamie, I, I, I believe you. I believe you're telling me the 100% truth. Um, I, I, I know you had a hard, uh, hard bar to sell to the county. And when we're the greater and, and they're paying the less, it's, it's hard to get the less to come up with. Well, their base rate was higher than our base rate. It's the, the but the total package is different. Longevity, uh, those kind of things. That's just my concern. I don't know that the, the actual specific dollar amount in terms of Daryl, I don't know that the specific dollar amount is um, as significant as there is a difference. <laughs> I, maybe I misread you, but... <clears throat> I'm willing to listen to what um, 
voices that people have to say about it. Right? I just know that <clears throat> my initial thought was what you expressed. Why not come this way and then everybody needs some really big win, a lot more than others, but no one's harm, <coughs> supposedly. And we looked at that. We, looked, I asked, we asked that question about having it be, if, if uh, the county was willing to increase, which would mean they would have to increase their, um, their compensation, um, their part to it, um, and um, it would increase our costs significantly more, too, because of the insurance base. Ongoing, and we looked at the and we looked at the the fact that um, so laying that aside, okay, increased cost. Let's say they can't get that accomplished. <coughs> our circumstance in terms of coming to our building and doing it at our place, notwithstanding the fact that it's a fairly new building and it was built the four stations and so forth, they're really, it would require some remodeling there. But even with the remodeling, it did not have sufficient capacity for the type of <coughs> um, configuration of rooms and, and supervisor's place and space and so forth. It just didn't, it wasn't suitable, it wasn't as practical as remodeling the space where it was larger and there was more room to provide for the kind of facility that was appropriate. So <clears throat> I don't think we, it's not my estimation. The people we spoke with, having that change in terms of the county coming up with additional dollars and additional pieces to it, at least the people we were talking to didn't think that was as very likely scenario, even if we had, but we didn't. So pursuing it further <clears throat> to try and move that, try and make that happen, we still are going to end up with at the county, and the county would be making the decision because we didn't have, you know, if we had it in our space and we're in, if there are employees and, and under our regulations and our expectations and so forth, as opposed to. Um, space just didn't and as I said we really tried to, to minimize that and I at the I same time <clears throat> understand and uh, I'm not just hardened <laughs> I understand the, the real difference in pay for people I, 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 I'm sympathetic to that empathetic to that um, but I don't know any way to accomplish what we what is in the best interest of the common good here, what's in the best interest of all the citizens of, of the county, all the citizens of Greensburg. I don't know any other way to, to try and achieve that without the differences that are there and <clears throat> without uh, the the hardship that it may cause, uh, I understand. But I think in the long run, and in terms of the common good, I think that's I think this is the right move. And, and just to be clear, I'm, I'm not questioning efforts on either you or Jamie. That's, that's <coughs> not my point. I, I, I think you were fighting an uphill battle with this issue. I, I understand that.
I think she's, we, Erica has written something out in detail to address the issues of the benefits that you guys had addressed that was central dispatch, <coughs> along with some of the salary, the benefits, but it, in all, it kind of gives it as a whole. And if we have additional, if you don't mind us speaking as well on a short note, if, if you have questions. Well, I'm not dispatcher. I'd like to have the report I may. Go ahead, Nat. I will preface my comments by saying I am totally in favor of central dispatch. I think it's a good thing for public safety, it's a good thing for officer safety, it's a good thing overall. I will say I'm going in this half blind, okay? I do have some experience in the 911 work in the past, but I am blinded by one eye because I've not been a part of your, your work group, so I don't know what you have discussed. But I'd like to throw this out as a possible model. Again, not knowing if you've looked at it, you can shoot me down if you'd like. But um, there is a model, and I believe the fire chief can either concur with me or, or correct me, but I believe Shelby County and Shelbyville City work in one room together. Uh, is that, that still correct? It is. Okay. So, again, I think it's good that we have everybody in one room working together so everybody knows what's going on with every officer, every EMS, every firefighter. So what I would suggest is, possibly, as a, as a model, as a, as a potential plan, keeping city employees, city employees, keeping county employees, county employees, and then through attrition, having everybody become a county employee. That satisfies, if you will, our city employees, maybe satisfies is the correct word. But it, it solves the problem, if you will, of them taking a hit, either through insurance, through longevity, whatever the case may be. I, I think that's a good model, it's a potential model to work with. Um, to save some grief, if you will. That will cause problems within the dispatch center? Yeah, it's a possibility. But those problems exist now regardless whether they're in two buildings or one building because they're ready to pay discrepancy. So I just want to throw that model out as for discussion, and it may be too late, and maybe you already looked at it, but just a suggestion. We did discuss that actually during our work groups. And I mean, I think there's some concerns with that. I mean, now there's obviously a difference in pay, but they're in different buildings, they report to different people. In this case, they're going to be in the same area. They're going to be reporting to the same person. They're all going to be following the same policies and guidelines put forth either, um, through the 911 board that's going to be administered through that director. And I think to put people at different pay rates and different pays, I think you're going to create a lot of turmoil. You're going to have a lot of problems. And it's just more streamlined. It, it will function much better if everybody's in the same same function. And just, I, I, we did talk about it. There were some concerns, I think, even with Shelby County when we talked about it and we got feedback um, when we discussed that. So that's that's kind of one of the reasons we, we kind of moved past that. I don't think working under one director or one board, whatever you want to call it, is going to be an issue because I truly believe everybody will do work together to work for what is in the best interest, again, of every police officer, every firefighter, every citizen in Greensburg and Peter County. I don't think that's the issue at all. They will work and do what they need to do when it needs to be done. Thank you. Okay. If one person wants to speak, we'll give you an allowable time, amount of time to get the point across. But then go back and have everyone speak individually. We'll be here tonight, talk tonight, or whatever. And I know this is important to everybody, including us. Dispatchers don't grow on trees. I, we understand that. It takes a lot of time, effort, certification to get to do the job. A lot of people depend on it. So we understand that. We truly do. So, ma'am, would you like to come on back? Uh, my name is Erica Free. I am currently a dispatcher for the police department. Um, I've been there for six years. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of myself. and. Uh, fellow dispatchers, that we do have uh, concerns and questions about implementing consolidated dispatch. Um, we we are obviously directly affected, um, and we've had minimal inclusion on the process, um, the details of combining both centers together. Um, all the information that was initially presented was presented on behalf of the uh, County Fire Association, basically presenting an 
in place of a few individuals who are pushing for the centralization. Um, they're being presented and implemented and they could negatively affect uh, the citizens of Greensburg, the citizens of Decatur County due to the lack of knowledge and basically just the basic understanding of how emergency dispatch works. Um, we've had to ask multiple times for any information basically um, for figures per, that are pertaining directly to us, to our salaries, um, because none of it is being presented outright and openly to us. Um, in February, we were allowed the opportunity to submit questions and concerns. Um, of the 26 questions that were submitted between the city and the county, 12 of them were answered with, the ultimate decision will be up to the director. Um, no real answers or clarity on exactly how the operations are gonna work. Um, we're basically at this point, we're being expected to make decisions on our careers and on our futures, um, according to no real answers. We do have um, salaries. We just received uh, an email yesterday from Chief Bridges with some updated salaries, um, updated information in it, but those are repeatedly changing. Um, they're still not undecided. Um, from my understanding, they won't be under, or they won't be decided until budget talks. So we're we're basically being expected to make a decision on this with no clarity of exactly how it is going to affect all of us. Um, of the seven of us that are full time, um, four dispatchers are actually going to suffer a significant loss from the projected salaries, and three will see a minimal gain. Um, due to the loss of longevity, the increased insurance premiums, and the loss of our clothing allowance. Um, the average loss of pay for the four mentioned dispatchers is going to be $2,168 per year, um, which breaks down to $84 per, I believe they are paid bi-weekly, so $85, or sorry, $84 per bi-weekly pay. Um, and that's even after the proposed increase of the uh, $1,849 in base pay for the city dispatchers. Um, the minimal gain for the other three dispatchers will be an average of $381 per year. Um, that's going to break down to about $15 per bi-weekly pay that they're going to gain. Um, with the exception of the salaries, the insurance deductibles are also going to increase for us, so that's another out-of-pocket expense that's going to be at our responsibility um, of the employee. Um, the purpose of this project uh, is outlined in the Dispatch Center Consolidation Project, which is the information we received from Chief Bridges yesterday. Um, I, I am not sure if you guys have that information or if maybe you guys have it from the work group. Um, it's to save money on the current general fund expenditures of both Decatur County and the City of Greensburg, as well as reduce the cost of current and future infrastructure needs. Um, however, the only set of figures and justifications that have been presented are to completely renovate the room um, at the Sheriff's Department, which is a very old building, as opposed to moving some of the equipment and upgrading other, the, other equipment into the Greensburg P Police Department Dispatch Center, um, which has only been utilized since May of 2002. Um, the GPD Dispatch Center was constructed for the specific purpose of housing a dispatch center. It's already weatherproofed, it's already capable of withstanding, so it's going to require less capital uh, to prepare for the function of central dispatch. Um, the dispatch center consolidation project lists the necessity of new furniture to accommodate the needs of the new um, dispatch software we'll be getting, um, which is Spillman. I personally worked in Fayette County as a dispatcher. I worked on the Spillman system. There is absolutely no necessity for any specialized furniture for Spillman to work. Um, there's no necessity for anything additional than what we already have available at the police department. Um, what we worked on in Fayette County was actually less than was what currently at GPD and Spillman functioned fine and their dispatch center functioned fine with no issues. Um, so, I mean, it is also a concern to put central dispatch in the same place as the emergency operations centers because now all of your eggs are in one basket and um, all the operations are in a, the same location. So in unforeseen circumstances, it cripples every service to the entire county. Um, a perfect example is in 2011 uh, when the tornado came through, uh, the EOC was inoperable and um, all the equipment and operations at GPD remained functional through that. 
Uh, currently, Decatur County Dispatch receives all of the 911 calls and reroutes calls located within the city limits to Greensburg Police Dispatch as long as they are not made from a landline um, number within the city limits. The Dispatch Center Consolidation Project lists, lists the practicality to instead send all 911 calls directly to the responding agency as prohibitively costly and claims that only two agencies reroute calls in the state, uh, Purdue and Indiana University. Only after we were initially told that it's impossible to split up those 911 calls to the respective agencies. Um, I did call today actually and speak with Brent Cummings from InDigital. Um, he said this information is inaccurate and not correct. Um, he said actually right now Lafayette Police Department is the only agency in the state of Indiana that receives their 911 calls directly. And he also noted that the cost to separate the calls and allow each agency to receive their own calls is covered by the state 911 board and is at no cost to the agency. Um, and Digital said they were certainly willing to work with the agencies to separate the calls if that was an issue, as well as the state 911 board is willing to help and do the same. Um, I did call and talk to Mike Franklin. He's the director of 911 for the Lafayette Police Department. Um, he said that they took 50,000 911 calls last year and of those 50,000 calls, only 1% of them were incorrectly routed to Tippecanoe County and or vice versa to Lafayette Police Department. Um, after they had started taking both, you know, their, both of their separate calls on their own. Um, he also stated that Tippecanoe County actually came to Lafayette PD and asked them to go ahead and take over their own 911 calls because Tippecanoe County was having manpower issues and so Greensburg taking over our own 911 calls and separating from Decatur County could be a resolution to Decatur County's mentioned need to hire additional dispatchers if we don't consolidate because it will take that necessity of them filtering our calls away if they come directly to us. Um, Mr. Franklin said that it takes approximately six to seven months to get that separation to occur which right now we're looking at a seven month time frame to centralize anyway. So if we're moving forward, what's the, you, I mean, take that seven months and, you know, separate the calls and leave the agencies as is, if we're looking at a seven month time frame anyways. Um, I did speak with Barry Ritter. He's the executive director of the statewide 911 board. Uh, he would also be the one governing the monies to split the calls. And he stated it is always a possibility to split the calls between agencies and that an estimate of cost is not available because it's dependent on the exact details of the process, but that it was certainly not prohibitively costly. Um, he did advise that splitting the calls is simply initiated by an agreement between the county commissioners and the Board of Works. Uh, doing so would still allow the agencies to work independently while still man maintaining a backup for each other. It would allow the agencies to work um, it, to eliminate the transfers and the confusion and would minimize, minimize the call taking time, which all of that is stated as necessity in order to consolidate in the uh, project packet. So rerouting those calls takes care of all of those necessities of centralizing dispatch. Um, the process of consolidating Greensburg Police Department and Decatur County Sheriff Department Dispatch Center is a large detailed endeavor which should be pursued as such in order to prevent any repercussions to the city community, the county community, and the safety of both. Possibilities are available to keep both agencies running independently in a cost-effective manner and could be pursued as easily as consolidation with less detrimental effects to the city dispatchers. Speaking on behalf of the majority of the city dispatchers, we can acknowledge the benefits of a consolidated dispatch center. However, the loss of our city ben benefits, including longevity, clothing and allowance and insurance, lowers our salaries in order to be more competitive with the current county salaries and punishes our loyalty as employees to the city of Greensburg. Um, the, and also just the figures on this came directly from uh, the packet that we received from Chief Bridges. Um, as far as the 2015 salaries compared to what projected would be through Central Dispatch for 2016, the change are the same numbers that were located on that packet. The only thing that I have additionally added in is we will be losing our clothing allowance. Um, one of our dispatchers will be losing rank pay because she is a coordinator, which would not carry through to central dispatch. And um, the insurance premiums I have listed are from information we did receive from the county today that that is their premiums. 
Um, and it's also according to our employees, whether they are using right now um, employee plus one, just employee, or family plan, and all of that is uh, totaled there in the end column um, for the difference in all of the pays and the loss of benefits. Eric, excuse me. I, I, I will, for the record, say I did miss uh, speak a few minutes ago when I said there were six that were taking pay cuts. It is four taking pay cuts and three that will take slight increases. Right. So I just want that to be corrected. Well, thank you very much for speaking. I, I just hope I can address a couple concerns maybe that you brought up. Uh, one of the things you mentioned was the dispatchers had minimal inclusion in these meetings. And uh, the one concern is, is currently the dispatchers report to the chief of police or the sheriff and both entities were represented in these meetings. You know what I mean? So it, it wasn't that they didn't have inclusion. We just, you know, you can't have 20 people in a meeting when you're trying to outline these things. So those concerns from the city dispatchers and county dispatchers were represented by those individuals. Uh, you had questions brought up that you said you brought up to the chief of police. Um, and I know that uh, the, the chief, when we had these meetings, brought in a list of several questions and things that we did go through. Um, and, and you're right, there are some things that you know, probably end up going to have to be decided when we, you know, we put a director in place, and then the 911 board is going to have a steering committee to kind of outline policies and procedures, and then that way everybody's on the same policies and procedures. So there are some unknowns there, but I don't think that's in a bad way. That's to streamline the process so everybody's doing the things the same way. Um, there are some unknowns there, but we did try to address those concerns in those meetings. Uh, this, the salary concerns or the we kind of discussed those. Uh, I, I don't know what else I can say about those. I, I, um, you, you made the comment about you guys are making a decision on your future your future careers. The one thing I do want to make really clear is nobody is losing a position here. There's there's no positions being you know eliminated. So there are you know everybody that has a job still has a job. There's no positions being eliminated. I, I understand that there's some discrepancies on the the wages and the insurance, but and we're trying to do the best we could working through this. But there's no, when you're saying making a decision on your future, we, we're not eliminating any positions through this process at all. Um, the other thing to consider